Come and get started on a new mission, mission. a new direction, direction, a new intention. intention. Welcome to 5.8G Alive at Connections 50 Plus. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, catering to all your prospects in the third act of life. Economic well-being, well-being. social gratification, gratification. personal fulfillment. fulfillment. Join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Connections 50 Plus Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on Gael the Caribbean. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. It is after six in the evening. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite, one of the co creators of Connections 50 Plus, which is bringing you 5.8G alive. And with me, as usual, this evening. Hi, good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us. I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, the other co creator of Connections 50 Plus. Now, it's Terry Ann. We are getting into an exciting phase. We are beginning to look at, uh, you know, all of us in transition. We are on this great 5.8G stage, but many people have come here differently. And we have focused a lot on those of us who've retired and therefore left the world of work and gone on. But we are going to start to look at people who we are calling self-formed. We're not saying entrepreneur, we're not saying professional, we're not saying nothing. Self-formed. And who really continually morph and change in life to fit into circumstances and we have some amazing stories lined up for you and today we start in with one of our local stars not so Jennifer <laughs> local icon <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely we're really very proud Terry and you know all our guests not one I can think of, Darian, that hasn't come and just made a difference in terms of the topic area. They are all, you know, very well informed about the, the, the topic. And you we get such great feedback. So it's always a pleasure when we have guests and, of course, guests like the one we're going to have now. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, you all remember who the cap is? Remember? Remember the young girl who had the affair with the teacher? We are talking to none other than Joanne Kilgore, one of the pioneers in, one of the rebels, <laughs> breaking the mold. So listen, let's sit down and take in this beautiful discussion with Joanne Kilgore about her transition journey. Right? And Terry, and of course, they know as Joanne Kilgore, and she's now Joanne Kilgore Downey. Yes. <laughs> So let's get into our tribe and take in this. Yes, tell us about that piece of batik at the back of you. Okay, so the piece of batik is with me more than 30 years. I carry wow. it wherever I go. My mm -hmm. sister was with me when I bought it. My sister and brother, I think there was a some kind of cultural fair at Mokarako Secondary School. Ah. I was visiting from the United States where I was studying. Yeah. So since my brother and sister died, mm -hmm. this is like my um, good luck symbol that mm -hmm. I take everywhere. Mm -hmm. I wrap mm -hmm. it as a skirt. I use it as a shawl. I wrap it in my head, but it's always in my presence. Yes. Remember that they are always with me as long as I call their names. So mm -hmm. I am strengthened in my resolve to get up and make a contribution to the day okay so that's the story of that batik and then are you seeing are you seeing this and this thing is hanging over a piece of plywood uh-huh i that's bought that in jamaica when i last saw my aunt in 2004 and she died on august 23rd last august um again another amulet this is the one with Thanks. butterflies on it huge butterflies yes, that's the one i'm seeing these are my amulets and as long as i have them with me i feel like i'm safe in the world 
I'm living out of two suitcases. I gave wow. up my apartment in Florida. I gave away everything. I okay. decided that I would come to Trinidad, check on my aunt. If I didn't, if I did like it, I would stay a long time. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, I would leave my aunt better off than I found her. She's 83 yeah. alone. Yeah. And I think she's doing very well. And she's in good hands with friends. So I can start planning my return to the U United States. Okay, beautiful. With an easy mind. That context is so relevant for so many of us at this stage in our lives. Yes. where we are responsible for relatives, um, be they blood relatives or just pumpkin vines that are very, very strong. And now we have to, we may live somewhere else. We may live here and, or it may be that we within proximity, but we just can't be in the same physical place as that relative. Mm -hmm. And that responsibility is ours. And, you know, as you mentioned, once you, once you've identified how the care is going to be managed, it's really only then that you can, all right, I can relax. I can, I can. Right. And that because is- I kept telling life. people I'd rather go than wish I had gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was away when my dad died. I was away when my brother died, when my sister died. And I thought, well, you're not working. Mm -hmm. You're not in school studying. Mm -hmm. You could sit in Florida and watch your toenails grow, but then mm -hmm. what would be the- valid reason for not going to see for yourself mm -hmm. and sleep better knowing what the deal really is we are looking at self-formed persons persons who who really created their own path created their own lives and now doing an a peek into what is this how is that transition onto the third act stage from the 50s into the 60s into the 70s and beyond because we have to project and hearing the stories and um i think it is great that we have you on because um as i said for many of our generation um you would be amongst the first of us, meaning Trinidadians, in particular Afro-Trinidadians, that we would have seen on television in works created by us, yeah. <laughs> R.S. James and that, that whole initiative. So we would have, and we would have been all within a 10-year age group. So you, as you presented on those um, soap operas or whatever we would have called them, would have represented us. So I think it would be a very, very pleasant experience for our viewers seeing you with us and, and talking about how that transition, that life, those stories, because I think they would have identified. So we really want to thank you for agreeing to be here, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, you know, definitely the name, I actually, you know, knew, and sister was Debbie, right? Yes. 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 So from those days, I'm going right back, right? Very, very early days. So I also knew Debbie. I didn't know your brother. I can't recall your brother, but I knew Debbie well. And of course, you would know me. But as Darian mentioned, someone on the stage, <laughs> very creative, your name, I mean, right to Trinidad, you mention your name and everybody say, yeah, Joan Kilgore, yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, it is really a pleasure having you here with us. I, I can easily relate and I agree with Terian. I know many within our age group. As your name mentioned, as they see you now, they say, oh, I remember. I remember. <laughs> so I remember. they would remember, but for those who may not know you or may not have re remember those days, yeah, you can share with us from that, that story. Yeah. Oh, so I think people stop and talk to me on the street, at events, um, because they remember seeing who the cat fits. And that was the series yes. funded by Spania Television. Yes. 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 But they didn't fund that with, with Christopher Laird. That was the one with Laird Christopher Laird. Was the, um, filmmaker. Tony Hall was the director and mm -hmm. actor. Right. Bruce Paddington was the producer. John yeah. Isaacs was in the cohort. 
yeah. um, Christine George, all these people mm -hmm. and um, Family Planning Association yes. was a major event because we got funded to do this lengthy series. And that means we had to develop characters over a whole spectrum of experiences. Mm -hmm. And it introduced young Trin Afro Trinidadians and Indo Trinidadians to the public mm -hmm. as actors. And it was my first glimpse into the world of professional theater. Yes. Um, film was something I hadn't even imagined in my young brain. And I had the chance to play Margaret Cruikshank. Yes. Who was a real hot up, hot spot. <laughs> so far from my normal life. <laughs> and said things that I wouldn't dare shape my mouth to say <laughs> to family or teachers. And had an affair with her teacher, Albert Laveau. Yes. So people memorized that face. Mm -hmm. And as with TV, as I have memorized yours, Terry Ann. And... I will meet you anywhere and know you because TV affords up that close-up view. People do that to Jennifer and I now. <laughs> Jennifer and you, they spot you. They yeah. spot you from yeah. across the parking lot because it's ingrained in your cell. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my first chance to work with professionals, to think of myself as a professional actor because I was paid. I was under contract. Mm -hmm. My guardians had to sign the contract because I was underage. Yeah. But from that point on, from 16 on, I have yeah. talked about myself as a professional actor. So mm -hmm. by the time I got to enter Juilliard in New York to train, which always seemed to me quite the reverse of what should happen in an actor's life. Like I did the gig, then I got the school degree mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I always used to tell people I'm just here to collect the license I'm driving already yeah. I've been driving yeah yeah <laughs> you know so a lot of things didn't phase me didn't upset me I always had in my head and my heart I was going home to act mm -hmm. I was going home to contribute to the development of Trinidad's professional theater yeah and so I was a tourist I was passing through yeah. um at Juilliard, I was not, to me, used as fully as I would have liked to be. Of course, all actors would say that. You want to be the lead. You want to be the second lead. You want to be important in the production. But because their syllabus was focused on Eurocentric classics, Chekhov, Shakespeare, mm. um, when we did Athol Fugard from South Africa, it was a huge change. And that is the... Um, work that I got to do on television representing Juilliard when they were 80 years old which is now mm -hmm. I think 40 years old if you look at the film <laughs> John if we could just set timelines who the fuck fit what, did that air during the 70s or the 80s it would be during the 70s yes. because if I was 16 it yes. was middle 70s if I, yes. I was 80 we're still in the 70s yes. so it was Late right 70s. after black power and in oh black my god we were so full of time. our blackness and our beauty yes. and our yes. uh, identity with our natural Africa, afro and everything else right which almost killed my mother when I came home with my braids <laughs> cut and my afro standing prop like Angela Davis had absolutely no effect on her iron <laughs> <laughs> she spent so many years pressing that hair to keep it growing and make it nice and smooth and easy to control. And I come home with my afro. I was wise though. I braided up the hair when I came home from the pot, so she didn't get the instant shock. But over the days, you had to take it out yeah, and open it out. Yeah. But John, at that time also, you were involved not only in in dramatic presentations through film but you were also a dancer I was a dancer that's where I was heading when I was yes. at the Caribbean School of Dancing I was under Marcia Moves, Patricia Rowe yes. later Noble Douglas and eventually Nolene Metivier who yes. campaigned for my scholarship from Sir Derek Walcott yes. in drama yes. because yes. I was told at 18 I was too old to pursue a dance yes. career mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I I, I can't say I cast about. Somebody 
invited me to do a Banyan workshop. Yes. And I went down to the meeting at Tranquility School one Saturday and started going to Banyan meetings. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, I was scripting scenes to be filmed for TTT. And yes, so it went. But that's how I met Derek Walcott. So Walcott yes. was through my work in Banyan television. And okay. I was fortunate to stay in his home my first year in Boston when I got the scholarship to start studying nice. drama. So I stayed with him and his family for a year. And then I auditioned and got into Juilliard and moved to New York. I'm still I'm sure very that, close to Norlene Metivier, his third yeah. wife. I'm sure that our our one of our serious partners and sponsors, Errol Fabian of Gaia, oh. would be totally thrilled. And Errol must be jumping up and down. I he is enjoying that interview with exactly. we, And I did a move on him and he stopped, froze. He could not move. He could not move. <laughs> He could not say another word. He couldn't read the script. It was just so mind blowing that I went there because I had just come home from studying theater for two years, I think. I can't and believe somebody made school. a move on Errol Fabian and Errol Fabian froze. He will live to tell the story. Errol, we will talk. And he always, he called me a radical the next time he had the chance to talk about me in public. <laughs> that radical, Joanne, Joanne, Joanne Kilgore. One thing is very clear, Joanne is that from very, very early, those in the theater recognize your, your skill and your talent. And so from very early that you are, as a young girl, as you said, you started very early with the um, working with Huda Capit. And I think because of that, you were pushed to call all the names, the, the, the names of those who really started theater, mm -hmm. you know, all the production. And would you say that propelled you, that support you got propelled you, you know, to, although you felt that, or they felt at the time that 18 may have been too old to start your dancing career, you were still allowed to um, give them that opportunity. To move further um do you think too is because of that support you got from that group oh i know for sure i'm writing a memoir now of 25 years of my life starting from the year of my brother's suicide to the year that i retire from teaching college mm -hmm. and on the cover of that book which i've decided to call memorabilia is a picture okay. of me at newtown girls probably waist high with my two braids and my bows, my little pointy tip shoes and ankle length socks, and I'm telling a story. Now the woman behind that was Mrs. Cole and second in command was Mrs. T.B. Walker. Mm -hmm. And they trained me at Newtown Girls. So I was entering the arts festival. Mm -hmm. okay. So by the time Banyan got hold of me, I had been through the foundation training to make me confident. And I got the physical training through the dance at Caribbean School of Dancing. So they actually got what we are still trying to create through the National Academy of the Performing Arts. So yeah. if we began where I began in Newtown Girls and started training our theater practitioners and putting them through the training that I received, we would be doing the work that those, I call them those pioneers yeah. in uh, yeah, elementary yeah. school, they already knew you had to be a rounded artist. Yeah. They knew you had to dance and sing and, and act. Mm. And they weren't shy about putting up people they yeah. felt could deal with that um, mm -hmm. intimidating experience of facing an audience, facing yeah. a group of strangers and feeling quite comfortable. Yeah. I John, was quite I, comfortable. Yeah, I always say, and, and Jennifer would bear me out of this, it is so important for us as we are now the grammars. Yes, <laughs> So if you're not a grandma or your auntie, there are the music festival and drama festival still exist and yeah. we do an injustice to our youth 
by not giving them that opportunity to perform in front of an audience. And the safest place to do it is while they're in primary school. So yeah. instead of taking every other hour to shove lessons down their throats, let them do choral speaking. Let them go into the, the, the choir. Let them do dancing. I know there is that side of it where we may not accept the arts as a legitimate place to focus your education and development because people are I think it's less, but it's still bad. They're still skeptical. But I am speaking here about just the experience of having a young person on stage pre performing for an audience. Not necessarily think as, as a sideline. The confidence it gives. They, they, they get an yeah. opportunity to know I can do this and I've done it and I got applause. It yes. does something to their self-definition, their self-worth that allows them to go on in the world and take risk, reasonable risk. And I just think it's, it's so important. I think most people that I know who have been successful in their youth somewhere had the experience to present a talent to the public somewhere. Yes. That's just a little thing that I have. And I think it's so important. And yes. nothing is wrong, which is how we grew up in Carlos Street in Woodbrook. We cleared out my grandmother's living room and we made a stage and we put an audience against the wall and mm -hmm. the children in the street had a chance to come up and do their piece. And one little boy, my mother never forgot. And I always tell this story. He came up on stage. He looked very nice. His mother scrubbed him clean and polished him. And he said, big boy's boots go stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> and he froze. That was it. That was it. My mother always told the story. Don't forget so and so who did that. <laughs> we never knew where the poem came from and what it was supposed to. Say. But we do know you do not go on stage and freeze and have an audience look at you waiting you know? for the end of your poem. I bet he turned out to yeah, be in front of an speaker. interview. <laughs> I bet he turned out to be a wonderful speaker wherever he was in life. He never Absolutely. froze again. I know he remembered. He remembered that day. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, John, let, let, let's get it. I mean, all of that is memorable, really. And, and that is why I think you're, you're such a good, good host for our show. Because the phase that we're taking 5.8 GLI live is we are looking at our professionals who we call self-form because yes many of us have worked somewhere and we've retired or are planning to retire and it's okay i'm done with that i'm going on but in your life you've always been uh, although you could tell us about your professional career as a lecturer a professor at the university but you continue to shape yourself so Let's hear, what was the path Joanne took from her 20s to 30s to 40s to 50s to 60s? How Where much have tape you been? do we have? How much <laughs> tape do we have? Just give us a short preview of that so we know how you've ended up here. <laughs> Remember that we were forming in, in the teens, right? We, we, we were coming to think of ourselves as a certain way, certainly as an artist. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of myself as an artist. And so... I graduate from Holy Name Convent and my first job is at the bank. And so I quickly understand that is not your work in life. Mm -hmm. No matter how stable they say it is, no matter how much of a good husband you'll meet somewhere in the break room, no matter how much of a good car you will get a loan to buy and pay till you die, it's all right. That's not my life. Mm -hmm. So I found a job at Providence Girls School teaching drama. And of course, the question to the professionals was, what does she know about drama? Mm -hmm. And what can she teach young people? Well, I managed to get through that event mm -hmm. without pie on my face or freezing on the stage after saying one line. And I decided to make my fate worse in the eyes of the aunties and the, the, the grandparents. I joined Banyan as a full-time <laughs> Clearly, this child was under some kind of intoxication. Clearly, the 70s broke you. Clearly, Clearly this child you. needed her mother in her life. Poor thing, <laughs> you know. Look at how defenseless she is. 
joined Banyan. You would have been labeled a rebel. <laughs> Sorry? I say you would have been labeled a rebel. <laughs> well, that's where the radical probably began. But listen to me. <laughs> I learned about video long before anybody could spell the word. I learned about production. Mm -hmm. Ages before anybody had a cell phone and started pointing and shooting every time they blinked. Yeah. It's very boring to me that everybody thinks it's wonderful to take pictures and make movies because yawn, yawn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 50 years ahead of that game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So without going to Banyan to work as a full-time member of their crew mm -hmm. and getting to go out on film shoots every and anywhere and meet people, I would not have met Sir Derek Walcott. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would not have had the opportunity to audition. I didn't know I was auditioning. We did yeah. the rig and everybody said it was rigged because only two people got paid and the rest still waiting on the check. Anywho, I was on the way to Boston to start my theater training mm -hmm. and to live in the house with Sir Derek Walcott and his family. And to beg, borrow, and besiege my brother and Dr. Jenny Rouse mm -hmm. to take out a loan so I could pay my expenses. Yes. So I had this weight on my shoulders. I was never a carefree artist going off into the world to paint pictures of fairies mm -hmm. dancing on pinheads. Yes. I was a working artist who had responsibilities. So I had, I had a responsibility to Sir Derek Walcott. It was the first scholarship he gave when he won the prize for the Genius Prize, the MacArthur Genius Prize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Myself and Benny Gomes, who is still doing lighting all over the world. He's nice. an ambassador for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. We were the first two to win scholarships from Sir Derek Walcott. Very so nice. while I'm doing my first year training in Boston, I know I have to pay back this loan. It wasn't a gift, it was a loan. Mm -hmm. I know the government is not going to give me a scholarship to study theater. Mm -hmm. And I know there's nowhere in Trinidad where I can come and practice theater when I'm done with that degree. Mm -hmm. The mind is always working about yeah. how do you make this practical? So we go on to Juilliard, we graduate, and we realize the only roles out there are for maids and prostitutes. That's a generalization. But I've said it enough times since I left Juilliard for it to be mm. truth to me and yeah. for others to identify with what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I have said, and if you look at Juilliard at 80, the film clips they used for the television program, I say to my director, I did not leave Trinidad where I could have done a role carrying a basket on my head to come to Juilliard and do a role carrying a basket on my head. Yeah. So I've been saying it long enough for it to be truth, facts to me. Mm -hmm. So I left Juilliard and I got a job teaching drama at a private school in Manhattan. And mm -hmm. after a year and using all my skills to work with young people in their teens. I went back to school and did a master's degree in teaching English, not English as a second language. English, did we study English in our yeah. classrooms? Yes. Um, then I met my future husband through the teacher who was directing me. So one must ask, what exactly was she directing you in? In teaching students or finding a husband? People go to school for an MRS. It's quite acceptable. <laughs> they leave their first degree with mm -hmm. either two, two certificates or one. I, yes, I yes. left with my Julia degree, my teacher's college, Columbia University degree, and then I earned an Your MRS. MRS. <laughs> so, so I moved. <laughs> I was extremely successful. I, I now had you. a way of paying back the loan because I had a teaching certificate. And I went to North Carolina and I taught drama at a high school. Yes. And I realized my most talented students were not reading and writing on grade level. Uh, they were exceptionally spontaneous, exceptionally good at characterization. They could carry the play, mm -hmm. but put them in a classroom, they made trouble. They were mm -hmm. thrown out. 
there were bad mouths in the teacher's lounge. They missed school because family life was just chaos. But they would hide in, in Miss Dowdy's classroom. And so when they sent the them out, so many of our talents. they would find yeah. a way to get into Miss Dowdy's classroom yeah. and hide. Mm -hmm. And being the indulgent mother that I have always been for children who are like me and would rather not sit still and stare at teachers at the front of the room who think they are cute, but they are not. Mm -hmm. Those were my children. So I tell people I have 400 children when they yeah. ask. And then I explain I've been teaching for 40 yeah. years. So mm -hmm. 10 a year over 40 years is what I allow myself. They yes. still remember <laughs> that teacher if they don't remember the name. Yes, yes. Um, so after that, realizing they couldn't read and write on grade level and that would keep them back, I went to do the PhD. Mm -hmm. studying how to teach reading and writing so I could train teachers how to do reading and writing. And I did my dissertation on mature women who left high school for one reason or the other, either dropped out due to family circumstances, they were pregnant or they had to take care of their siblings and could not manage. Or like my talented students, nobody really took the time to understand what they needed and help provide that in the school setting. Mm -hmm. So they had raised their children, sent them to college, and then decided they were going back to school to get their high school diploma. Yeah. That's the group that I wrote about. That's Beautiful. the group. Because I understood my high school students were heading straight into that lane. Mm -hmm. And in 20 years, they'd be the ones decide I'm going back to yeah. school. Mm -hmm. I've done all these things. This can't be difficult. I can manage it. That's the group that I wanted to be close to. That so that matter. began my, my, um, my career as a professor and my research mm -hmm. career. So up to today, I've done, you have to look at the site, maybe 17 books, mostly about Black women in education. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting brave once I got tenured and I could do what I want and not be crouching in the background, peeping out of a hole. I started looking at teachers who used arts-based instruction in their mm -hmm. classroom mm -hmm. and training my teachers to use arts-based instruction in their classrooms. So instead of being the sage on the stage, which is the way that we've been raised, the way that we have been trained to believe education takes place, mm -hmm. I encourage them to be the guide on the side. Figure out what the student needs, supply those needs and then invite them to join in that discovery of their own creativity, their own logic. They have tremendous logic, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think we got up here and then I retired in 2020. I had put in my papers to leave in May 2020. And in March 2020, COVID hit and they sent us home. So I got to go home and teach online, which I absolutely hate and will not embark on unless you pay me huge money <laughs> because actually it turns out to be one-on-one -on -one coaching. So mm -hmm. people complained about COVID lockdown and the time mm -hmm. alone. I was in absolute bliss. Yes. <laughs> I had my downtime. I had my quiet space. I did not have to get dressed in three layers and go out into the winter six months, seven months for me because I'm a tropical fish. Mm -hmm. And I started writing my memoirs. So I'm now on the eighth draft of my memoir that started in 2020. And I'm now sequestered in my room in Trinidad, enjoying the luxury of waking up with bright sun outside. Yes. And blooms on every tree I walk by. And now and then stopping to engage with someone who thinks they know me, but don't know if they know me. And I'm not telling them if they know me. <laughs> Duran, um, I want to congratulate you, of course, with your writing. But I would like to go back a bit. You have been doing and still doing very powerful, I mean, work. Work that, you know, we talk about it or you hear about it. It is so needed. 
um, to empower others, especially the mature, the mature woman. Mm -hmm. right? What I would like to ask, and I know, I mean, you have been doing a lot of research on the, in that area also. What would you say in terms of those who have reached this stage, those who transition in um, from that, whether it's from being a, a, a homemaker, Mm -hmm. You know, seeing the you know, adulterer and now going off on their own and having now to make a decision or decide what do I do with my life at this stage as I age. Mm -hmm. um, from your research, what, what would you say? What's happening in, within that group in terms of transitioning? I think the first thing on my list is what has been your burning passion? You may if mm -hmm. you even have forgotten it, you have denied it. You don't even know there is a burning passion because you have been so lobotomized. You, have, you, you bought what I call the lie. Remember I was the child who left the bank and went to teach, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> then left the teaching job and went to work with the film crew. You have a burning desire, there, there, there is a talent. There is a leaning towards something that has been denied. It has been crushed. It has been ignored. Do the soul, soul searching to find what that is. Where did you put it down? Where did you forget it? Where did you put a blanket over it? For the children, for the job, for the relationship, for getting over, for getting up. Where did you put it down? Can you go back and resurrect it? Can you go back and befriend it? Can you be the person who makes it a safe place to bring it home, that it will be safe with you? Was it cooking? Was it sewing? Was it running a marathon? Were you one of the people picked up a guitar and could pick a tune? I don't know what it was. Was it writing? You wrote every day. You wrote on every scrap of paper available. You hid it because you were not encouraged to do that thing. It was a waste of time, quote unquote, okay? Go and make friends with that denied piece of you buried piece of you? Did you like making up people? Did you like cutting up curtains and making clothes or, or pieces of decoration? What, what was it? What was it? I feel all of us have that, that piece in us. To me, I could have been a seamstress. I love cutting up. Don't leave me in a room with bed sheets and curtains and covers for pillows. <laughs> My aunt brought me two bags, cloth bags, that they use to put shoes in. Yeah. So when you're traveling, you put and you draw the string yeah. and you put it in your, put it away nice in your suitcase. Well, now they are two halter tops. And she almost passed out when I turned up in her bedroom wearing one. <laughs> wearing the shoe bag. <laughs> yeah. I was always a bag lady. <laughs> I am so proud of my halter tops. <laughs> so in me is the designer, the creator, the visionary, the make do, because if you're going into the arts, make up your mind, you're going to be a poor person more than you're going to be anything else. Financially, I went to poor. Do, financially poor. Financially poor, which is what really makes a big difference in your lifestyle and your life choices. So I made up my mind when I went to Juilliard, I was going to be poor the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I decided, well, that means you're just going to have to make do. Make do, which was my mother's theme song. We make do. We buy a solo and we put in Klim milk and we put it in the ice tree and we make ice cream. I grew up. <laughs> yeah. Blocks. knowing Blocks. how to make do it never bothered me i was sixth in line of the clothes that came down from the cousins so they started in new york I can relate. and it went to jamaica <laughs> and then it came to trinidad it had to go through my sister and then it got to me and then it went to three people behind me so i just had panting breath 
<laughs> that it got to me before it got out of style or it got worn out. Mm -hmm. This was, I still do it. I love thrift stores. I will look, I just went to a thrift store and this lady's telling me that too big for you. I said, watch this. I put it on, I pulled it up over my tits mm -hmm. and I zipped it. And I said, do you like my dress? She couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. She could not stop laughing. I said, well, it's too big for my waist, but it fits me perfectly <laughs> exactly. under my arms. <laughs> So mm -hmm. there's the creativity, there's the make-do, there's the economic straightened circumstances that will make you see things in a whole different way than other people. I think this is, it is so good to get that reminder. Um, and Jennifer, we know that one of <laughs> our, one of our dear supporters who you mentioned just now as one of your, 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 your guardians, Dr. Yes. Jennifer Rouse, is what, on this show, she presented that as something that is so critical to our transition. Try to remember where you left that passion. Where when is you it? Put it down to see about the children, to pursue yes. the job, to take care of the parents. When they got yes. lost in the competition, you know, um, yeah. how you you were fortunate in that you continued on your journey with your passion. Yeah. And it, it morphed and you could see the development from dancer, drama, teaching, studying English to then finding the passion of those children who had to find their way and then dealing with their parents who after they took care of the children mm -hmm. came back to say, all right, I need to take care of myself too. Yeah. Did you personally have that kind of transition as you grew older and you went through all these waves, we, we've seen what you were doing. What was happening in Joanne's mind in terms of your definition of self? Did survival. Survival. The theme song of my life is survival. Yeah. How do we make it through this? Mm -hmm. That is the creative part of your being. Mm-hmm. So people always say, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens to you. So you can get the degree and come home. And I asked at least two of my friends of many years when they said they were sending their children abroad to study dance. And then what? And they couldn't answer me. I said, are you sending them to study so they come home and sit on your sofa and watch TV for how many years? Because we have only so many dance schools. We have only so many slots for people to go and teach dance and the styles that they will be studying. What, what is the plan going forward? Mm -hmm. See, and I never let myself get in such a rut. I was given many gifts. And I was always open to the opportunity to explore a gift and to learn something about the gift. Because I didn't go and say, I want to go to study. Come, somebody give me a scholarship. I want no, no. People picked me up from where I was and said, You have to go and study. Now we're going to figure out how we're going to get you to study. Yeah. And so it's when the next, you modified as you went along. You, you have to be creative. Life is a creative experience. If and you're not creative, dance. you're falling asleep. And pretty soon they will put a blanket over you and use you as a table. My mother used to warn us, if you stay in a job five years, they will treat you like furniture. I, I love, I want to put a pin here and really make sure that we understand that when you say be creative, you are not talking about dance or drama. No, 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 no. You no, are no, talking no. about using your mind to look at your environment, look at the opportunities and see what is there that you can fit yourself into. Because so many of us think what I did yesterday has to be connected to what happens today and tomorrow. And sometimes there's a clean break and we don't understand that our creativity allows us to find opportunities. Yeah. But I want to turn um, what you just said on its head mm -hmm. and then she can come in and put the window yeah. dressing on it. You are connected to what came before. You are the river running through the landscape. 
whether the river is on top the mountain or it's underneath the, the floor of the valley, yeah. you are the connection. And you are creative all the time. I'm always surprised when I stop and compliment a woman and say, you look so pretty. And she looks at me in shock. And I say, you know, you wouldn't leave your house looking like a bag of old clothes. So why are you shocked that I'm saying you pulled it off? Congratulations. You look very nice. Yeah. And every single time it amazes me that we're not accustomed being celebrated or we're not accustomed hearing it from another woman who is the most severe critic of how we are, which is how I started saying about you too, mm -hmm. how well you look, how impressed I am with how you pull it mm -hmm. off, right? So you are the connecting thread between back then and now. Mm -hmm. And I have yet to see a Trinidadian woman look bad which means we are creative every single second of our existence. Yes. We Going to bed with the wrap time. on the head to make sure the hair is perfect in the morning is creativity. Making sure that the pants is hemmed, it's not stapled, it's hemmed so that it falls perfectly over the, the ankle on the shoe. And while pressed. <laughs> you must. You absolutely must. You will not leave the house if that shirt is not cutting the air on the side of the sleeve. We are creative every single second. Yeah. Every single second. I drive in my in the taxi. My best, my best experience. I know I'm in Trinidad when I'm in a taxi from Independence Square to Diego Martin Main Road. Mm -hmm. If I don't do that, I'm not in Trinidad. And I look at our color schemes, our combination of, oh my God, it's mind blowing. What we fashion, our design sense is absolutely stunning. Yeah. We don't see it because we take it for granted. Yeah. We take it for granted. But if you spend 40 years in snow and all you see is gray and black and tan, Brown. We have a deep appreciation for all the colors of the rainbow in any combination that it appears. Okay, so now we can go to her reflection that I yeah, cut off. John, I totally agree with you in terms of we are creative people, we are beautiful people. But you know what I see is an issue with us, one, and this is no judgment or blame on anyone. In growing up in our era, our creativity, we haven't been allowed to harness that creativity. You know, um, again, because of the, the education system, because of how we were taught that, yeah, you, you, you study hard and you go in the work in the bank, the service, et cetera, definitely. And, and not the creative creativity to us then meant you do dance or you do art or you, you know that and you don't get a job or you're not recognized for it. So for all the years right through, um, many of us as, as parents also did that injustice to children who were very creative and, and to some extent is still being done. So when you reach on this stage that we are, yes, we have to now find where did we leave that? So it is, it's like being something completely new. And we have to believe in ourselves, believe how important it is mm -hmm. to find whatever we are creative in. Then really move and enjoy that, that, that stage in life. The other factor, which are however you want to put it, that prevents us from, from really enjoying that creative stage is that, and you mentioned it, somewhere along the line, we have not been complimented, embraced, you know, being told how beautiful we are, how beautiful we look. And when we get a compliment, especially from a woman, as women, because we are normally told, oh, women fight each other. You, you, you have that as a narrative. So when you are complimented, you, you don't know how to take it. So we also have, when you ask, that we have to find where we left that, that creative self, where we left that skill, where did we leave it, and we have to find it. 
we also have within ourselves to, to find that appreciation of us. And, and we talk a lot about it on our show. How do we appreciate ourselves and, and accept that praise and that compliment without flinching? You know, somebody, you're kind of checking yourself to yes. see what you're looking yes. at. In some you know cases, it's true. You know it's true. Just yes, say yes. Yeah. Thank you. In yes. some Thank cases, you, you know you're not going to respond <laughs> negatively. And you might say, you find so? I don't find so. You know, uh -huh. that, that type of yeah. thinking. So I'm glad you, you reinforce how important it is for us to find our creative self and embrace all the compliment. And we should also start doing it ourselves. So yes. when you do it yes. and you get used to it, when someone tells you how oh, great you're looking, you smile and you're happy yeah. and it makes yeah. a difference to our energy. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to, to bring that home some more, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, we have to keep, we have to keep loving on each other. I learned that mm -hmm. term from another group that I was uh, invited to to work with. We have to keep loving on each other, and and so much of our women's experience, I find, I think, I theorize, is shaped through the lens of the male gaze. Why don't you think you're pretty? Some male in your life. Yeah penetrated your love armor and convinced you you are not pretty or yeah. pretty enough and we carry this male gaze with us as the reflection of who we are so we can't get that male gaze out of our system because the society reinforces the importance the necessity the, the reverence for the male gaze, hmm. okay? And you can see it on the billboards in Trinidad. Look, look at what's on the billboards. Look at the faces, look at the features. You can see the male gaze has organized the way we see ourselves or see yeah. not ourselves. So that's a long speech, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to go into the space in yourself where you remember it was safe to be you and to like you and to be like for you yes. is an ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is part of the excitement of transitioning. Right. As we talk about transitioning, you don't have to wear high heels anymore. You're out of that office suite. Mm -hmm. You don't have to perm your hair anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But John, I want us, I want us to, that, that is something that we can go into for so long. And one of the characteristics that we consider our 5.8G tribe, that's our 50 to 80 group, is that we have evolved or are evolving. And the gaze that matters is that mirror hanging up wherever in our bedroom, in our bathroom. <laughs> Right. You up in the morning, whether you strip naked, you're half naked, you look at yourself and say, beautiful person you are. And you go on with that confidence through the day, making your choices. It, it really must be, have to work ourselves up to that. Must look at that lady in the mirror or look at that man. Look at the belly, look at the breast, look at the butt. Look at the arms that flap. Look at whatever it is and accept it for what it is. And if you want to change it, you go for decide it. how you do it whenever you yes. do it. But yes. don't yes. be bothered by external yes. references. But John, we've got about five minutes again. This was no. so exciting. And no, five minutes. I want us to get a chance to talk about you now because I know you're a prolific author and you're working on your, as you mentioned before, your memorabilia. Could you talk a bit about this? Because I'm thinking this is what you are now, you're in your mid sixties and you are looking forward to that third stage, the seventies or eighty. So what is Joanne doing now? Joanne is waking at three. She's writing at four. She's doing her meditation at five and she's going out walking at 6 a.m. She comes home and she works on five pages minimum. Mm -hmm. Some days it's more. 
but five pages is the minimum. And this is the eighth draft. So I'm promising myself, don't change the story. Yeah. You can fix a word, you can move the semicolon or put a period to break up that long sentence, but don't change the story. Great. And she's Great. going to be done with that draft by the end of September. Mm -hmm. And she's going to pass it on to a friend who is a published author and ask her, where do I send this? If anyone's listening, call Terry Ann and tell her, I have a place, Joanne must send that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I, I know, I know the, 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 the co-owner of Gael is a publisher, so <laughs> you might get a call from Julie, who knows? <laughs> anyway, I want to do this book, I want to do a reading of this book to a group of women, yeah. so you organize the group and I will read the book, because yeah. when you read a book out loud, it's very different to when you hear it in your head. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's the next project while I'm here, and then I'm looking for a place to live in Florida. I just got emailed today that someone I know is renovating her garage apartment. I plan to keep living with two suitcases for the long yes into my 70s it's so it's so freeing yes it's, it's like you stop wearing a bra every day oh my gosh oh my gosh i used to think you started to shed all the attachments i i you just living free what i know is i've buried enough people and seen enough people buried yeah. that you never have a u-haul behind the hearse <laughs> never i've never seen one there's never going to be a chance where a u-haul is hooked to the hearse so I'm saving everybody a lot of drama. Trouble, what yeah. the Jamaican call, call, they call it the dead left. Yes. If you want to see a family explode, yes. dead left, everybody's running and grabbing. <laughs> and those who come and, last get the least, okay? And, um, and we just see what this, this, this um, memoir does for Joanne's writing profile because yeah. Joanne thinks she's a famous writer already so she's just trying to fill up her bucket with these experiences because I dreamt I was going to be interviewed but I didn't know by who and I didn't know on what program and then your inv invitation came and this is how I have lived my life I dream yes. Yes. I don't tell anybody because it spoils whatever magic yes. and then I watch to see how it comes and it to manifest. life how does it and still go on. This was so Sorry. fantastic and so phenomenal. Oh, you give me goosebumps. <laughs> I should send you a check in the mail. Tell me the address. And if I share a story with Joanne that as a young dancer with my little Les Affan, you know, we used to look up at repertoire and and, and, and all those people. And, and Joanne Kabo was one of the dancers, you know, we'd look at us as local trainees and doing stuff so you know it's always nice to be able to talk to one of your heroes and this is what i'm doing right now so that is so amazing <laughs> and joanne was being pounded like a cassava in a bowl <laughs> by her teachers do there it were, again do there it were again. dancers do like me again. looking up to you and you sending know. energy that's what took you forward so you're <laughs> <laughs> you were every winning. time all your right up i mean you are very very successful and definitely as terry answered you are artist, a creative uh, professor, someone to, to really look up to. And, you know, many people don't like to be termed like a role model. But I would say, I would consider you a very, very powerful role model. And for the work you have done, especially for women. I mean, this program is for both men and women, but they say behind every good man as a woman. <laughs> So I, I just want to thank you again. And I know this thank is you. not the end of us, you know, connecting with each other. Yes. yes. And, you know, we look forward to maybe having you on the show again. And when that we would do be lovely. To read in. So, that would yeah. be lovely. I can come and read something from my, my yes. memoir. Yes. Great. Um, Great. I wanted to share a quote that was given to me. Now it would probably be almost 40 years ago when I met my spiritual instructor. Um, he said, only the jeweler knows the jewel. And I consider you two jewelers to have found wow. this jewel and to polish it and present it to your audience. So I can't say enough thanks and God bless and keep you safe as you do this journey that is so important to all of us 
becoming who we were meant to be, who we are destined to become. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a discussion, Jennifer. You know, it is very, as you say, happening when you hear someone who's so creative from, from our, I have to say from our time, and who have shown that that creativity with you, that creative talent, builds your self-confidence in so many ways and take you right through out, you know, in, in, in Joanne's case, to academia. Because in the earliest, you have this concept that if you're creative, that's it. Mm. Like you, 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 you stop. You no, stop. No. You can't go into different fields. That was a so, 50s, 60s, you know, 70s thing. <laughs> Children of the 90s, that's what I When I was then, and, and we are at this yeah. stage. And, you know, it is really great to, to know and for yeah. Joanne has, has proven it. Yeah. That that's yeah. not so. Yeah, you know, so, so when you think of how many of our children and grandchildren have gotten scholarships on sports scholarships, on yeah. creative scholarships, a lot of us understand now that, listen, the, the, the non-academic side, I think there are probably more sports athletes and, and, and artists out there than their academic scholars. <laughs> Not putting yeah. down and, and academic you scholars. Must say, but... I mean, Joanne is one of the persons who paved the way. Exactly. You know, exactly. for those that have been able to, ha have been successful, yeah. you know, as creatives in different areas. Yeah. So we hope you had a wonderful time today and keep viewing because next week it's going to be another one of our cell phone persons until then <laughs> bye. bye 50 plus tribe and followers from trinidad and tobago and the caribbean thank you for joining us on this connections 50 plus 5.8 g alive show we hope you enjoyed the lively conversation <laughs> and look forward to seeing you next week don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really love getting your feedback. Bye, Bye for now. now.